<laughs> that's that's further down the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, at the beginning, it's it's definitely a struggle. It's it's uh, it's fun, mm -hmm. but uh, you definitely have to be passionate about what you're doing. And uh, you know you know the saying, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you really you really get to know why that saying is there. It was a lot of trial and error in yeah. the beginning. Like I I knew absolutely nothing. You're not guaranteed to make that. And I was like, I'll show you. I promise, I'll show you. Uh -huh. You know, when the first booking goes through, it's like, oh crap, we're missing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the person's like, oh, what about this? It's like, okay, yeah, there's there's a lot to learn, you know? And I was, my vision was worldwide. And that's what really made me excited. That's kind of what keeps me going every day is knowing that this is this can be like a worldwide thing. So. Welcome back to Two Fries Podcast, where we document the rise, start, of Winnipeg's talent and personalities, aka welcome back to the number one podcast in Winnipeg. Hit the subscribe button. We've got new videos every Tuesday, bangers on bangers on bangers. Let's go. Woo! Let's bring on our guest for today. He's the founder and CEO of Rent You Ride, who is innovating the car rental industry. Please welcome Michael Okoye. <laughs> hey, let's go. Not the first time you heard that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it memorized by now. <laughs> welcome. Hey, uh, thanks so much for coming here. Uh, I know we talked before, but we'll, I'll get you to mention again. L give us the audience a little bit of background about who you are and what you do. What you do. Sure. I'm Michael, uh, founder of Rent Your Ride. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, you know, I kind of started uh, Rent Your Ride back in 2016. That's when I first thought of the idea. Mm -hmm. um, a little background about myself. Oh, sorry. sorry. A little background about myself. Um, my first job, I was uh, not a detailer, uh, a dishwasher at uh, DJ's Restaurant on Portage. Uh, I got hit by a car, kind of put me out of <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> out of work for a bit, and then uh, I started uh, working at Mercedes Benz as a detailer, mm -hmm. uh, and then I worked my way up to sales uh, while attending the University of Manitoba, and then I dropped out of the university and uh, kind of pursued rent ride full time. Perfect, awesome. <laughs> what was this, what was that initial process like, like starting up your business? I mean, you're in school studying <laughs> science, economics. It's not <laughs> yeah, it's not, easy, <laughs> right? stuff, it's not easy stuff. Like, how did what was that process like for you? Yeah, it was it was uh, it wasn't. I wouldn't say it was too tough, um, but it was a lot of Googling yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot of staying up late at night and kind of just figuring things out. Like, I remember I was just Googling, how do you even start a company? How do you even open up a business? And yeah. thankfully, Google is a powerful, powerful <laughs> thing to have. Like, you can find everything you need. Um, but, uh, yeah, the first step I did was, like, uh, on Google, it was, like, how do you start a business? Um, I was figuring out what name to use. Mm -hmm. um, and... The biggest trouble I had was, okay, I figured out the name, but when you open up a corporation, you yeah, want the corporation to kind of have like your business name as well. Yeah. yeah. And you want like, for me, I was, uh, it's all online, right? So I wanted the domain to, mm -hmm. to all match up. So I had to like match up the corporate name, uh, the, the domain name. I had to make sure all of that was available. So that was kind of the toughest part in the mm -hmm. beginning, securing the names. Sure. Um, and then after that, it was, it was not too bad after that, that. Like it was pretty easy. So your first step, you had the idea, you ready to go. And did you have? You didn't have any background, I assume, right? In, Absolutely in not. business. No. So uh, after researching, what was like the main thing that you really focused on? Or? Yeah. So I, the main thing I really focused on was um, just like know, growing it. I guess. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. There was a, it's it was a lot of trial and error sure. in the beginning. Like I I knew absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so. <clears throat> Uh, for example, like I had no idea how, I don't know how to code. Yeah. Right? So that's the biggest part of my platform. It's, it's a website. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. It's a website. It's an app. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, finding the people that were able to do that and realize my vision. That was the biggest part. You know, I, I hired someone off of Kijiji actually to build my first website. <laughs> Kijiji should sponsor you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I love Kijiji. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so yeah, I hired my first uh, yeah person off of Kijiji to build the website mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it, it, wasn't you know to the quality that I wanted like that I envisioned for Rent Your Ride, mm -hmm. um, so you know that was really the biggest challenge that I had in the beginning was just finding the right people to you know build my dream and mm -hmm. and my vision. So yeah. yeah, did you did you have like a business plan going in? I know you said that you tested the market to see if there was a demand and whatnot in terms of Kijiji, but like did you have like a set in stone path written down like here's what I want to do. And here's how I started. <laughs> no, no, no. So at the very beginning, I didn't have a business plan. I knew I needed one and I was kind of working on one. Um, I guess, it, you know, I had a notepad that I wrote down what needed to be done, mm -hmm. like a very basic business plan. And again, I had no idea how to write a business plan. So I went on Google again and I was like, can I find someone to write a business plan for me? 
like, I know what I want, but I don't know how to write it properly. Yeah. And, you know, I'd get quoted for, like, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to get that done. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, bro, that's like oh one hour God. on Word. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm just going to do this myself. So yeah. uh, initially, I didn't have a business plan, but then I did end up writing. One. I mean, as entrepreneurs, when you start and, like, anyone who's ever tried to even t- anything, like Instagram account, yeah. a natural business. Yeah. You, you got to go through it alone at first, mm-hmm. right? You got to do the hard stuff. You yeah. got to figure out everything. What were some of the challenges that you faced? Yeah. Uh, the the biggest challenges I'd faced uh, were kind of just like juggling everything. Sure. Yeah. Um, you know, there's so much uh, to do and like, you know, you're, you're pulled in so many directions. Yeah, you got to do everything. Uh, yeah. yeah. Y- it, it's kind of just figuring out, you know, what's the highest priority mm-hmm. starting with that and then, you know, working on the th- other things later on. Mm-hmm. Um you know, one of the biggest uh, things that was tough for me was kind of branding uh, and kind of creating a brand image for Rent Your Ride. Sure. Um, thankfully, I had a, a very good person. His name is Armin. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, he's uh, out in Toronto now, I think. Uh, but he was a really big you know, factor in the current branding of Rent Your Ride and kind mm-hmm. of the message and everything that yeah. uh, we bring apart. So yeah. so how, wow. how old are you when you started Rent Your Ride? It was like... You're in university, oh right? Yeah, so like 2019? Yeah. yeah, so I would have been, it was in 2016. Okay. Um, so, sorry, quick math. I would have been like 20, 19. Yeah. Okay. 19, 20 years old, yeah. And did you have your vision to go far? Well, like, when you, did you know that like, hey, you know, I want to make this a global, I want to make this oh yeah. city, yeah. Uh, province, yeah. across national? Like yeah. That was the goal from that the beginning? The yeah, that was the goal. Like, as soon as I thought, like, anyone can put it on, mm-hmm. and again, Kijiji is Canada-wide, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, I can, you know, easily do this in Manitoba, B.C., Saskatchewan, Ontario. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it was, my vision was worldwide. Vision was and that's great. what really made me excited. That's kind of what keeps me going every day is knowing that this is, this can be like a worldwide thing. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, you know, they say that your nine to five is what provides your income. Yeah. And then your six to 12 <laughs> is what provides your, like, yeah, the rest yeah, of your well, life. Exactly. Right? What were those hours like for you? Were you working, like, going to school nine to five and then yeah. late nights just yeah. grinding it out? Crazy, crazy hours. Yeah. So I go to school, study. Um, once when I was done studying and doing, like, all the tests, I would work on Ranch Ride. And, I was just so excited that, you know, I wouldn't really feel tired or anything. I would work till like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and then I'd have to be at uh, university at 8 a.m. the next yeah. day. Yeah. And I wasn't tired, though. Like, it's because I was so excited about it, and it just kept me going, like, mm-hmm. every day. And then, so you're balancing both school and uh, yeah. your passion project, or yeah. well, at the time was your passion project. But what was the balance like? Uh, you go into school and then you got your family side as well. You know, they, they want you to go to school and yeah. what was the whole convincing of them? And yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so about the school and, uh, the ranch ride thing, uh-huh. I was also balancing Mercedes too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Time. Too. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was detailing too. Uh-huh. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't, looking back, I don't know how I did that. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So like it's, as I, you know, grew further and further into Rancher Ride, it started becoming more and more time was dedicated towards Rancher Ride. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had to give up either Mercedes or school. Sure. And, you know, I didn't like school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My dad wanted me to go to school, so it was really tough. Uh, but I ended up giving up uh, school to, you know, work full time at Mercedes and then provide more income so that I can, Put you know, in. chase this dream of mine that I have. Mm-hmm. Um, and telling my dad that, no, nah. no, yeah. no, he did not like that. Uh, he, <laughs> he threatened to kick me out of the house. <laughs> yeah. He actually did kick me out, um, but uh, I didn't leave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I just stayed and he kind of no, cooled I'm down. And <laughs> do, you, do you have Im- Im- immigrant parents? Or yeah. yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to assume yeah. nothing. But like <laughs> no, doctor. Yeah, yeah. We, we can relate. Yeah. Three <laughs> choices, doctor, engineer. Yeah. Oh, no, lawyer. actually four, doctor, engineer, lawyer, or disgrace to the family. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But uh, my dad, my dad's an amazing He's yeah, an amazing guy, um, yeah. and he's very supportive of what I do now. So They just want the best for you, Exactly, right? yeah, so exactly, yeah. exactly. You grow to realize that eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, there, was there, like, you know, convincing them? Like, did you have to provide any statements? Like, hey, man, like, <laughs> <laughs> look, this is, this is you, you, like, p- pitch them a case. You yeah. pitch them your like, business. This yeah. can work. This I can, can do work. this. Yeah, my initial pitch wasn't even rent or ride. Yeah. Um, it was Mercedes. So the biggest thing for my dad was obviously he wanted the best for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, my, my dad, he had like a tough, like coming from, you yeah. know, Nigeria, he had a tough time here in Winnipeg mm-hmm. uh, or in Canada, I guess. And uh, he just wanted me to make enough money to support myself yeah. and a family. Biggest thing for him was, okay, how much money are you making? Yeah, of yeah. course. And, uh, you know, 
transitioning to Mercedes as a salesperson, I was like, Dad, like some of these salespeople are making two hundred thousand dollars a year. Mm. Like, you know, I yeah. I don't need to go to school to make that much money. And he's like, Well, you know, it's you know, commission. You're not guaranteed to make that. And I was like, I'll show you. I promise, I'll show you. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, when I was hired, you know, I grinded it out. You know, I was working at Mercedes twelve hours a day sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's something that I love, so I didn't really feel it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I ended up making, like, really good money there. And I showed my dad, like, one pay stub that was, like, really good. Like, my best <laughs> month, I sold 20 cars. Wow. Um, and, yeah, I showed him the pay stub. I'm like, see, Dad, like, remember, like, last year when you were <laughs> <laughs> saying that you didn't want me to go there? Here we go. Like That I, feeling's got to be yeah. amazing. That yeah. feeling's got to be amazing. And he was super proud. You know, he's always wow. wearing the Mercedes hats and everything now. So That's amazing. Yeah. So what, what was that initial, like, steps for you? Now you were working 12 hours a day in Mercedes. Yeah. What was that step? You're like, okay, let me start converting this time into rent your ride and let me yeah. take that up. So th- it was when the business was really validated. So um, we first had a website. Mm-hmm. Um, people were using it. And then we built an app. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, there was like traction with the app. And uh, <clears throat> once when I saw traction, enough traction to, you know, realize that, okay, this is something that can actually work. Mm-hmm. That's when I was like, okay, uh, I should start thinking about dedicating my full time to this. Uh, the toughest thing was, you know, having the savings and the income yeah. uh, and then going into something that, you know, is not really, I'm not, pa- I still haven't paid myself through rent ride mm-hmm. So like, you know, reinvest. Yeah, yeah. Going into something that's not necessarily going to pay you and figuring things out that way. But uh, once when I figured out that timeline, that's when I kind of left. And was it just you uh, for when you were working at Mercedes or did you have like a, a team building? And Yeah. So, teams? so I had like, I subcontracted the app building out to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it was really just me. And then um, what, what was like the launch day like, right? Yeah. So <laughs> launch day was exciting, but very stressful. Sure. Um, it was, it was good though. Like we had like, uh, how many, it doesn't sound like a lot, but we had like 300 or 400 downloads sure, that's the good. first day. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Um, cool. I always, I'm always aiming high yeah, though. Sure. So yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, you know, like, Could but be a thousand, was, like, yeah, exactly. More, yeah. But uh, no, it was really good. Um, you know, a lot of people downloaded. Uh, I think we had a couple listings the first day as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but the stressful part was there was bugs with the app. Yeah. So that was the stressful oh, part. Man, um, yeah. uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, you know, it was good. Like, people wanted to use it, which was mm-hmm. the best part. So, What was the process like building your team? Like, telling someone your vision and then convincing them to believe in it? Yeah. What was that part like? Yeah, like that was that was the toughest part. Tough, Honestly, yeah. that was really tough. Finding people that, like, I would know right away <clears throat> when I would tell these people uh, my idea. Mm-hmm. I would know right away whether they were going to be part of the team or not. Yeah. Because, you know, if I told them and they got super excited about it and they started, you know, Working whipping up ideas about rent your ride. I was like, okay, That's like cool. this per this mm-hmm. person, this person's about it. So, yeah. um, but yeah, it was tough. It's, it's tough finding the right people, um, that are, you know, willing to grind it out like you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I look for in people is okay. You know, I've been grinding it out for this long mm-hmm. and, uh, are these people willing to do that? So did yeah. you have people who said, no, nah, it's not going to work or um, was it, was it generally a positive response? It was generally a positive response. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I can't really think of, you know, there's obviously a lot of questions with sure. insurance and things like that. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I haven't, I don't think anyone really said, okay. no, that's a, that's a bad idea. Because um, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a yeah. good idea, <laughs> especially when there's no, no one, one in Winnipeg. Yeah, yeah name, exactly. You're a market creator. Like exactly. You're the first one there. Exactly. What was, that, what was that like, like convincing someone to be like, hey, this will work? Like, even if they didn't believe it, like, you know, sometimes you you, you bring members on and then, they lose that spark. Yeah. They're, they're, you're grinding so much that you lose touch of the idea. What was, like, mm. keeping control of that, like, basically, like, managing people? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, again, it's just, you know, when, like, losing touch, is, it, it does happen often because there's so many things day to day that, that you have to take care of. Um, when you lose touch, number one, you got to go back and figure out what your why is. Why are you doing it? Mm-hmm. And once when you figure out that why, or you, you already know the why, but you know you, you need to remind yourself why you're doing it, that's kind of when that spark comes back. Mm-hmm. Um, but just the projections, like the projections, right? Yeah. Um, I know how much money RentRide makes every time one car is rented, mm-hmm. right? There's uh, 30 million people <clears throat> in Canada. If we get 1% yeah. of all of those people using the platform, mm-hmm. It equals X amount of dollars. Sure. Yeah. And those numbers are huge. Yeah, yeah. Right. And that's just Canada. Yeah. 
go down to the United States, who has 30 million people in <laughs> California alone, yeah, right? Uh, the numbers just get that much better. Sure. Um, so, you know, keeping people excited and, and showing people, you know, the true potential of Rancher Ride is really the, the main thing. Hey, yo, we interrupt this episode to bring you today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more. Anyone can join the millions of the members in the community to learn cutting edge skills, network with peers, and discover new opportunities. If you'd like to support our show and are interested in Skillshare, click the first affiliate link in our description to get your 14 day free trial on us. It's quick, easy, and you can cancel it anytime. Now back to the episode. What do the logistics look like? Are you guys, uh, are you are you able to s- tell us numbers and how Ranger yeah. Ride is able to convert? So, yeah. so start like, let's start with like, someone puts up a listing right <coughs> mm-hmm. how much are they going to expect from it how much of the proceedings go to you go to them yeah, go to sure. the person yeah so we're like one of our core values is honesty and transparency sure. so i'm totally fine sharing all of those things okay um so for rancher ride we earn our money two ways so we earn our money from the host who is the, p- the person that lists the car yeah and we mer- earn money from the guest so when you list a car, let's say you list it for $100 a day, we have something called a service fee. So that service fee is taken when someone books your car mm-hmm. and you earn money. Yeah. So it doesn't really cost you anything up front. You only pay when you start making money. Mm-hmm. Our service fee is 25%. So okay. if your car is listed at $100 a day, mm-hmm. every day that it's booked, we would earn $25 of that. Okay. Now from the guests, when they book your car, they would see something in the form of a trip fee. That's 10%. Um, so we would make ten dollars, an additional ten dollars off of that hundred dollar transaction. So okay. in total, it's like thirty five bucks off of that one transaction. Wow! Mm-hmm. And the rest is profit for the uh, the, ge- uh, the the host, the host, host yeah. and the guest. Yeah. So they would earn seventy five bucks. Wow, that's not bad. So it's actually. like a win win yeah, for yeah. everyone. Um, and that money goes towards you know making the platform better, mm-hmm. uh, you know keeping you know the team on board, uh, and ultimately like the customer service things like that. So I, I know you said you put up your. BMW, yeah, the M3. Mm-hmm. How many like what were those initial stages of p- convincing people to actually like put up their put up their rides and like? Yeah, that was you know that was kind of like that was a tough part. I'd say that's always going to be the toughest part. It's, it's easy. There's always a demand to rent a car, like yeah. for people to book a car. Uh-huh. Um, but for people to give up their cars, you know, it's a little bit harder. Sure. Um, so number one is I had to find the right person, yeah. right? So if I f- if I go to someone that loves their car it's their baby <laughs> and they're like you want me to rent it out to other people you want me to let other people drive it yeah hell no yeah. right so it's like finding the right people that would be willing to do that and it's mainly like entrepreneurs and business people mm-hmm. um or people that really need money right. um but uh how i first started doing that was i reached out on uh, on kijiji again <laughs> 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 to people that were selling their cars and I was like, hey, you know, instead of if, if this isn't your only car, That's smart. instead wow. of selling it, why don't you put it on Rent Your Ride, earn X amount of dollars, like eight, 600 to $800 per month, mm-hmm. and, you know, have some passive income. And uh, a lot of people were like, oh, that's a good idea. Smart, uh, some people were like, no, I just want to sell it. And some people were like, hell no, I'm not going to let anyone drive my car. Yeah. So okay. that's kind of how it started. Would, um, would you say that's like, like your initial marketing scheme? Because you have the great idea, mm-hmm. but if there's nothing to tell people or yeah. promote it would yeah. you say that was your first thing you that did? was that was the initial one mm-hmm. um and then of course friends and family okay they're yeah, always yeah. the best oh yeah 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 so to so talk about the logistics i know like for me like let's say i love the idea yeah i want to put up my car but my main question would be what if someone crashes it yeah the insurance that's, that's yeah. what the insurance is for <laughs> okay yeah so that's uh, obviously that's a risk you're gonna take you know you take that risk driving the car yourself yeah. right um, but uh, here in Winnipeg uh, or Manitoba, we have insurance called U Drive, offered by MPI, mm-hmm. and it's specifically made for you to rent your car out or give it out to people. Okay. Um, so, if you use, from my understanding, if you use your normal like all-purpose insurance, and they find out that you're renting your car to other people, they may not cover you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what this insurance is for. You're completely covered. Um, your deductible goes up to like five hundred or seven hundred fifty dollars, but you can lower it back down, mm-hmm. uh, and you get like a basic i think it's two hundred thousand dollar liability but you can also increase that as well so okay yeah wow and yeah. then and then our people are hesitant only the hosts are hesitant right mm-hmm. to to put up the car but i i have your app downloaded on yeah. my phone and i was scrolling through you guys got some pretty nice cars on oh, yeah there. you got your own car on there yeah. as well right yeah <laughs> yeah D- uh, how much money are you making on your car alone let's uh say? so when i had my mercedes oh, which yeah. i just sold uh i was i had that listed at i think 249 dollars a day mm-hmm. 
Um, you know, there was a month where I made like, I think almost two thousand dollars off of that car. Oh. Um, my Tesla I have listed for two hundred fifty bucks a day, mm-hmm. and it's the only Tesla for rent in Winnipeg. Yeah, I was looking, and it's at a it. Model X too, so oh. it's like the cool one with like the cool <laughs> yeah, yeah, dull wing yeah. doors. Um, and a lot of people rent that as well. You know, I can make easily over a thousand dollars a month renting that. So, what was the process like of investing? You know, like your in- your cars are basically your investment. You're yeah. putting back into your business. What was that process like for you? Yeah, it's uh, the the biggest thing was you know finding the car that people would really mm-hmm. like want to rent. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and finding the car I liked as well. <laughs> um, so it's a win win. Um, but uh, yeah, the biggest thing was just you know figuring out okay how much is this car going to cost me and what are the chances like I got to figure out my break even how many days uh, a month do I need to rent this car out yeah. uh, for it to make sense. Um, the Tesla was like a no brainer. Yeah. Uh, people are gonna yeah. I just knew people were going to yeah. rent it out. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just finding the right car. What I about guess. like a basic car? Like if someone's got like a 10 year old Chevy Malibu. Those, <laughs> yeah. I, the one in the driveway, <laughs> the silver one in yeah. the driveway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know what? It's, with those cars, it's all about price. Sure. So I, I don't know if I mentioned, but I also have a Toyota Corolla on there. Uh-huh. Um, and it was like one of the lowest priced cars at the time. And that's booked all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, people are either looking for something special mm-hmm. uh, for like a date, a wedding, yeah. uh, or like an anniversary. Uh, or people are looking for something that's just cheap to get them mm-hmm. from point A to point sure. B. So with that vehicle, I would say, you know, as long as it's priced well, yeah, you're going to get a lot of rentals. And with the, let's say me. Uh, would I be picking my price? Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay. So again, it's just like a Gigi. Okay. Right? okay. So oh, you pick okay. your price. You you upload pictures. You pick everything. Right. Mm-hmm. You want to make sure it, it's something that's comfortable for you. Uh, so if you wanted to list your car for you know fifty bucks a day, you can do that. Mm-hmm. You, uh, may not get like the a demand. whole bunch of rentals. Sure. Uh, so you can adjust your price accordingly. But there's other things you can do. So you can set the kilometer allowance. So you can set it so people can only drive 100 kilometers a day on your car uh-huh. or 150, 200 kilometers. And if they go over those kilometers, you can set it so that they get charged 25 cents a kilometer, 50 cents, 100 or not 100 cents, uh, mm-hmm. like a dollar. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, you, you basically have control of everything. Perfect. Yeah. Good you know, know, like setting up that business, man, like you don't have these all these logistics figured out when you like launch it yeah like how much yeah. did you have to learn on the go oh my like, gosh like making changes <laughs> on the go i'm still i'm still doing that to this day. <laughs> still doing that to this day but it was a lot yeah um you know when the first booking goes through it's like oh crap we're missing this yeah uh mm-hmm. the, the person's like oh what about this and it's like okay yeah there's there's a lot to learn you know and i honestly i feel like that's the best way to learn though is yeah. you know just diving right into it and learning as as you go, mm-hmm. I think that's the best way. So, because a lot of people can do the front end kind of business, yeah. right? Get the logo done, get the Instagram that's page going, the website, yeah. even the app is kind of back end stuff. Not many people think about the app, but going like legal stuff, finance yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's more of the back end. Yeah, and you, you had some some uh, knowledge in that prior, but yeah. I'm sure you, you hired on people and get it going. What's your team looking like now? So my team's still pretty small. So it's me. Uh, it's Aaron uh, Badescu, so he does like the marketing. Sure. And then I have Joe, who's doing the um, sort of, uh, he's doing the app basically. Okay. Um, and then I also just onboarded a customer service person, mm-hmm. um, and then we also onboarded Arsh as well. So he kind of does like the sales and outreach for Rent Your Ride. Um, s- so yeah, he just started though. He literally just started. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, we have like five people. Arsh, I didn't know you did that. <laughs> His name's Arshi. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, I hired this guy. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, our team's still pretty small. Um, a lot of the things with Retrad is automated, so it allows us, you know, to stay small like this. But uh, we're definitely expanding. So. Wow. And then you just finished rounds of investment. Am, are you sh- am I correct? We're doing around. Ra- we're doing, doing rounds of investment. Okay, you're doing. Yeah. 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 What is it like taking your company from Winnipeg? Yeah. And now well, you guys are in. We're we have our pilot program in Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan okay. and uh, Vancouver as Vancouver, well. Okay. Yeah, so what that means is the app is open there. We're not doing too much marketing there yet, mm-hmm. uh, but it's open there. So if someone just you know falls upon it and lists a car, uh, they they can, okay. and they can like book a car as well. Uh, travel to Vancouver actually, and we got that uh, Ferrari California listed on there, which was pretty exciting. Wow. Um, so <laughs> yeah, and then there's like a Dodge Ram listed in uh, Saskatchewan, uh, but yeah, again, we haven't done too much marketing there yet. Have you uh, gotten that Lamborghini listed yet, or no? You Still working yet. on it. Still working on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that your dream car? 
Yeah, my one of my dream cars is a, a Ventador SVJ oh, yeah. Roadster. <laughs> I love nice. those. Yeah, this is sick, man. Yeah. Do you have a picture in your room or anything? Uh, on my phone. I yeah, yeah. You got yeah. you got to have that in front yeah. of your mind. Right? Exactly. Every day you got to see it. <laughs> you got to yeah. see it. Yeah. What was that process like of scaling the business? You know, like going from let's say like a hundred users to a thousand. Yeah. What was that like for you? Um, it was. Uh, it's there's it's always a challenge, right? Um, the the, f- like the first thing that, really made a difference. We really scaled this year. Like mm-hmm. this year, we saw inc- crazy growth. Yeah. Um, and I think the biggest thing that caused that was really finding like out what the metrics were of the business, you know, so finding out where we're losing people, Mm -hmm. you know, is our marketing spend efficient? Like if, if we're spending $500 here, how many people are we getting onboarded? Um, how much money does each customer spend? Um, how long do they stay on the app for? Like how often do they spend that money? Mm -hmm. Um, so once when we kind of figured out those metrics, we were able to, you know, adjust how we do things yeah. and uh, really scale the business in, in that sense. Okay. Um, yeah. So are, are you looking at mm-hmm. some of your competitors like down in the States? Like I think Turo. Turo. Yeah. Turo. yeah. How, how, are, how often are you looking at them and seeing what they can do and uh, do they pose a threat? Or do you, you know, s- like that's, that's always a question I'm asked. Sure. Um, I believe competition is good. Uh-huh. Right. Um, and, you know, you look at like, uh, like grocery stores, how many grocery stores are there? You know, how many you know auto mechanic shops are there? Mm. Um, Turo, we do look like you know in the past we definitely have looked at them. Yeah, uh, we look at going uh, down a different route though than what Turo is currently right now. So um, you know they're very they're a really good benchmark. Mm-hmm. You know they show that the idea works. Yeah, right. They're they're quite large mm-hmm. down in the states, um, and uh, yeah, I think it's really a good benchmark overall to to. Okay. We interrupt this episode to bring you another sponsor. If you've ever considered building a website, you've probably definitely heard of Squarespace. Squarespace is an online website web designer that allows you to create your website from scratch using a wide range of templates. If you want to build an e-commerce site, a small business, Squarespace got it all. Click the affiliate link in our description to start building your website today. You'll be helping out the show and also creating a killer website to flex on your peers. Now back to the episode. (laughs) Before the break, we asked you... um, What's that entrepreneurial life li- lifestyle like? Yeah. Like you're working on your own business hours, you're waking up when you want to, and yeah. you're still making bank. Yeah. What's that like? Yeah. Well, you know, like making bank, you know, <laughs> that's that's further down the road. Yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. At the beginning, it's it's definitely a struggle. It's it's uh, it's fun, mm-hmm. but uh, you definitely have to be passionate about what you're doing. Yeah. And uh, you know, you know the saying: if it was easy, everyone would do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you really you really get to know why that saying is there. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, you know, it's. It's stressful, but it's also nice at the same time. You sure. know, having your own hours uh, is good, but you can't take advantage of that. You yeah. can't be like, okay, you know what? I'm going to wake up at 12 today <laughs> yeah. uh, because you're just going to get so far behind. You're going to get you know, behind on so many things. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you th- have that mindset, you're not really going to grow as an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Right? You have to do more than what someone would be doing at like a nine-to-five job to really get ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious to see what your mentality is like. So how are you mo- keeping yourself motivated? I know you're passionate about the thing, but is there any tips or, trip, uh, tips or tricks that you do to keep yourself keep going and even the people around you? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So again, it's always coming down to your why. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the biggest thing. When you remember your why, like mm-hmm. my why is I want to help people um, and you know I want to create a, a better future for, for people and myself as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what comes down to that too is, or what helps with that is writing down your goals. Okay. So if you write down your goals, it's huge. Like, like when you write down your goals, it just sticks in your mind mm-hmm. um, subconsciously. Um, so I write down a lot of my goals and I review them a lot too. So you know, I'll go back and be like, oh, this was my goal here. Look how much progress I made. And that's yeah. exciting. And that ca- kind of keeps you excited and you know, mm-hmm. willing to, to push through everything, all the challenges that you have on okay. a day-to-day basis. Yeah. You know, these entrepreneurs have these crazy routines. Like yeah. someone's waking up at like 4 a.m., <laughs> going to the gym, and then working like nine, yeah. like eight to five. Do you have that routine or? Uh, mine's, I wouldn't say mine's like crazy like that. Um, you know, I've fa- kind of fallen off of it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, so when I was working at Mercedes, I would get up at 4.30 a.m. I would take a cold shower, okay. like right straight away. cold. Yeah. I would get up. Three seconds later, I'd be up out of my bed, take a cold shower, go to the gym. Mm-hmm. Come back home, eat breakfast, go to Mercedes, and then after I'd work on Rent to Ride from like nine till one a.m. 
mm-hmm. and I do that every day, like Damn. six days a week. Sunday was like my day off sure. where I could sleep in a little bit. Um, now my, my routine is not nearly as crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll get up at like, you know, 8 a.m. and I'll work on ranch ride. The hours are still quite long. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I get phone calls sometimes at like 1, 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. and I have to answer them. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's kind of like my routine now. It's a little, cause I'm not juggling as much. Now yeah. Yeah. In terms of like two jobs or what's your role looking like in rent or ride now? Uh, what are you doing on like a day to day basis and are you managing clients expanding? What's yeah. What's so, like? so it's really busy. You know, I, I've taken on the role of a lot of people, which is why I've you know, started to bring people on. Mm-hmm. Um, my day to day was finance, um, customer service. So, you know, responding to people's inquiries, mm-hmm. um, basically, and then yeah, growing. So like doing outreach sales, uh, and a lot of planning as well. Okay. So that's good. Wow. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, we talked about marketing as well, you, uh, how has the social media played a role in uh, growing your business? Yeah, social media has played a big role, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, Aaron has done a very good job of, you know, making our social media presence known. Mm-hmm. Um, we get a lot of inquiries through social media, like people DM Rent Your Ride, you know, asking how they can rent a car mm-hmm. um, or how they can list a car. Um, but social media is definitely a powerful tool that I think biz- like all businesses should use, yeah. all of them. Especially, like, we're not too big on TikTok right now, but, like, TikTok is, like... <laughs> the reach is huge. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy, and it's free. That's yeah. the biggest yeah. thing. Uh-huh. Like, social media is free, uh-huh. which is the best part of it. So, you know, it can, like, lower your customer acquisition costs and things like that. So I, I think it's really important. It's played a really big role with Rent Your Ride. Yeah. What was that process like, you know, like, converting people? Like, say, like have that instagram you have the followers you have like 20k something followers mm-hmm. even like 10 percent that more. goes <laughs> trying to convince them to buy or sell or like you know put up their ad what's that process like for you are you like making it easier for them or what's the conversion rate look yeah like? yeah yeah so like from social media i don't know off the top of my head the exact sure. conversion rate um but you know the way we kind of can try and convert those people is we don't try and like directly say, Hey, use our app. Mm -hmm. Right. We want to be, you want to provide a solution to a problem that they're having. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, when you see a post saying that like you you can earn $600 a month renting out your car, Mm -hmm. you know, this is our way of trying to provide a solution to someone that, you know, may be struggling with their car payments or looking for extra, uh, extra cash in their pockets. So Mm -hmm. we don't necessarily try and do like a direct conversion, like DM this person and be like, Hey, list your car on the platform <laughs> it's kind of more of like you know again yeah just providing a, a solution to a problem that they're having and this is just their question do you see this market growing or is there a point where you see that more people are just not really interested uh throughout the years yeah so i can see it growing as we expand you know across sure. canada mm-hmm. um but i think the biggest where we're going to see the biggest growth uh is really from like word of mouth sure. um mm-hmm which does partially come from social media, yeah. but uh, from people using the platform. Uh, I think, again, that's where we saw our biggest growth this year. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot of people in Winnipeg are talking about it, um, and a lot of the listings that we saw and rentals were from people referring their friends to it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where we're going to see sort of the biggest growth. I mean, that's how I found you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So it clearly works. Yeah. (laughs) In our marketing class, we learned that, like, Manitoba and specifically Winnipeg is like the best test market for any industry. Did you experience that? Like, you know, like there's always that motto, like, oh, Winnipeg people hate on each other. Like they don't want to see you succeed or something like that. Did you ever experience that personally? Like just people like trying to like hate? I'm sure, I'm sure it's, you know, happening behind my back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I'm lucky to have a very supportive group of friends and, you know, close knit uh, community. Mm-hmm. Uh, that support me. So, you know, like to my face, I haven't heard that. Yeah. I'm sure there's people, you know, yeah. catching <laughs> me behind <laughs> my back. But again, you know, if you're not doing anything significant, like, uh, or sorry, you're, if you're doing something significant, there's bound to be mm-hmm. haters, right? So and uh, what about like dealing with those kind of hates? Like, uh, do you have like a way to be like, ah, there, it's fine? Or does it ever get to you? Or um, I wouldn't say, like, I haven't, again, I don't really know if people are sure. hating yeah, on yeah. me, but, uh-huh. um, you know, like, you, you, you definitely have to have a, a hard shell for for that kind of, of stuff. Um, I, I wouldn't say as of yet, I haven't had it, like it hasn't gone to me, sure. but, um, you know, a way that I would deal with it is, you know, 
again, I, I always think, you know, if you're not doing anything, like if you're doing something significant, yeah. you're bound to have people trying yeah. to hate on you. And like uh, one of my mentors told me, when you're in first place, you have the biggest target on your back, mm-hmm. right? So that's kind of how I would look at it. Yeah. So not that I'm in first place. I'm not in first place at <laughs> all, but like, you know, if you're ahead yeah. of someone. Of course. There's you know, always going to be people who want to get to where you are. Yeah, right? yeah. And, and so. some people, unfortunately, show it in a way that's is negative mm-hmm. and they kind of try and bring you down to, to their level. So yeah. That's how I would view it. No, that, that's definitely like, you know, something any anyone can relate to. Yeah. You know, even some to go to like if someone were to post a thing on Instagram, like you <laughs> you may not like it, yeah. may not hate it. You know, why, why Mercedes? Just your favorite thing or? Yeah, I just like luxury cars. Uh, at the time, BMW was my favorite car, mm-hmm. like my favorite luxury brand. Yeah. In that segment. Um, but now that I've worked at Mercedes and I've driven Mercedes, I'll never go back. Their, their slogan is the best or nothing. Yeah. And it's true. They live up to it. They really live up to it. Like, mm-hmm. I did a lot of uh, training, and they would kind of show us, you know, how they built cars and the thought that went behind, like, you know, small things in these cars. Mm-hmm. And it's insane. It's insane. They're literally the best or nothing. <laughs> they are. And you drove a Mercedes. Yeah. Right? I've driven you a c- couple of them. You just yeah. recently – okay, so the, the we, we asked you when you came yeah. in, but you're, you're wrapped Mercedes, yeah. which one is a great brand uh, yeah. awareness. Like, yeah. I saw that car. I'm like, okay, I know where that's yeah. from. Yeah. What was the thought behind that? Was that the idea? Yeah. Yeah, that was the idea. Like, uh-huh. I wanted to have the craziest Good wrap car. ever. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the brightest wrap that would, you know, bring people, like, attention to the car. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that was the idea, and it worked really well. Yeah. Like, I would drive, and people would be like, oh, that's the rent your ride car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You work for rent your ride I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I'm the only <laughs> company, bro. <laughs> I would never say that. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I work for them. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Is it more of, like, a we mentality, like, as a team, right? We yeah. Are, we are together. Yeah, yeah, approaching. exactly. Uh, that's the best mentality yeah. I have, of course. It, what, you know, entrepreneurs, they always have other streams of income. Yeah. What's that looking like for you? I know you do some real estate, right? Yeah, yeah. I So before I left Mercedes, I had a couple of rental properties. I did, like, one flip. Um, and uh, I did, like, I did like buy and sell cars on the side. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else would I do? Stocks. Um, my license plate. I don't know if you guys know my license plate on my uh, yeah, on my Tesla. It's GME YOLO. <laughs> uh, so, you know, GameStop. Yeah, yeah. I went crazy. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I was in that. Um, How did that go for In you? the dip? or? or oh, I was, I was in it before it even, like, took off. Oh, okay. okay. There you yeah. go. So I, did, I do, like, options trading. Okay. Uh, so it's, like, a little different than normal stock trading. Sure. Um, it's kind of, like, leveraged, I guess. Uh, so, yeah, I got into it when it was $40 a share. Oh. Oh. And I rode it all the way up to, like, $390 at the, at the very top. I didn't sell at the top. I wish I did. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I did sell, and I made uh, quite a bit of cash off of that. That went crazy. Yeah. That went great. I remember yeah. like looking through like BNN and on, on my oh phone yeah. and just like oh yeah, they were talking about it constantly. And then yeah. Robinhood stopped yep. trading. I was oh, like, oh, that was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Are you big into crypto at all? Or yeah, like yeah, guy? yeah. So I did a lot of crypto futures trading. Mm-hmm. Um, made a lot of money. Lost a lot of money in that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, crypto is crypto is definitely like the new thing. Like it's gonna be here to stay for sure. I mm-hmm. think so. What about, oh, sorry, what about involving crypto into that's what Radio I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. yeah, 100%. That's coming. Is it coming? That's yeah? coming, yeah. So we got to figure out a way to implement that. But uh, again, I think that's a way, right? You, you, you look at countries that are adopting it as a currency. Yeah. Why would you not have that? Why would you, why would you not take that as a payment in your business? Mm-hmm. Like, yes, it fluctuates. But, you know, like, you, you want to stay ahead of the times. You, you don't want to be catching up, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think if we implement it, it's, it's going to bring on more people. Mm. Yeah, attract more people so uh, how do you think is like how important is it to have a team around you that believes in your vision but also pushes you to be better very important mm-hmm. very important so um mercedes was really really good with that really good with that mm-hmm. at mercedes you know i was surrounded by so many people that were like-minded that were driven and we were all pushing each other mm-hmm. we were all pushing each other and when I was in Rancher Ride by myself, I lost that. So it was really tough for me to, it wasn't tough because I was always excited about Rancher Ride, but it was harder for me to, you know, get through the hard stuff that would come my way because I didn't really have anyone pushing me to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but my team now, uh, my team is a very good team right now. Yeah. And uh, we do a good job of uh, pushing each other. But that's, you know, I, I like that you brought that up because that's a huge thing. That's yeah. a really, really big thing mm-hmm. for sure. People checking you to make yeah, sure you're people still checking you and making sure you're 
You're on, on top yeah, of it. Exactly. I mean, you know, finding Each a team's hard. You know, it's not it's not always yeah. easy. And then you seem to have found the people you think uh, who are you know yeah. in your circle. As far as expanding goes, once you have branches in, you know, full full grown branches, Vancouver, Saskatchewan. Are you looking to open like a storefront or not a storefront or a, like a office or something yeah, like yeah, that? And yeah, yeah, and so then hiring people through there. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think right now our our main like you know once when we raise and everything, our main headquarters will be here in Winnipeg. Mm-hmm. I always believed in, you know, I think Winnipeg is a great place to start, and I I always wanted to give back to Winnipeg. Like one of my long term goals mm-hmm. is I want to invest a lot of money into Winnipeg. Yeah, uh, just because I think it's such a has so much potential yeah likewise mm-hmm. has so much potential you look at calgary mm-hmm. and i think calgary is like what winnipeg should have been be. yeah or should be of course yeah. and uh yeah that's anyways uh going back to your question <laughs> sorry um yeah like we <coughs> we would have like our headquarters in winnipeg and, and hire through there okay basically. Yeah. i mean winnipeg's a growing market you know yeah, exactly and uh we, we've talked about it so many times on the podcast as well like s- the sense of community that you see here and the fact that there's not a lot of people doing a lot of great things, yeah, it, it really is just a growing market. Do you see? Have you compared yourself to like see how you guys would do in like a major city compared to like uh, let's say Toronto or mm-hmm. something like that? Hundred percent, yeah. And, yes. and, and how 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 do you think it would be different? What 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 challenges would they present that would not be here? I think the the biggest you know benefit that I've had here in Winnipeg is the support. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people do support local businesses here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd get that same support in Toronto. Of course. Yeah. Um, you know, Toronto is more cutthroat. You know, yeah. Like, I feel like if I started this in Toronto, <laughs> people would probably be trying to take me down maybe. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, start something similar and be like, oh, use ours instead of theirs. You uh-huh. know, it's a lot more competitive. Sure. Mm-hmm. Whereas in Winnipeg, I, th- I feel like if you have a great idea, there's not necessarily people that are, like, going to be like, okay, I'm going to do something and try and compete against them. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, let's support him. You know, let's, let's bring them up. That's, mm-hmm. that's kind of the feeling I get. I don't know if it's. Yeah, of course. Um, True, yeah. but uh, that's what I yeah, no, without experience. experience. We yeah. Feel you. yeah, there. You said one thing throughout this podcast, and it stuck with me, and it's like bringing me back. You said you haven't paid yourself yet. Yeah, from rent, you're right. Yeah, what was the? M- I, I know what it is, but for the viewers, what's the mission behind that? Well, I, I it's just reinvesting in the company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you know, if I take money from the company, I'm gonna you know, stunt the growth of the company. Sure. Um. So yeah, it's just reinvesting into the company to grow it and i don't necessarily need to pay myself Mm -hmm. through the company so why would i pay myself if i don't need to pay myself Mm -hmm. i have other ways of making money outside of the company i'd rather just reinvest all that money into growth and uh you know further down the road when the company is you know stable large then yeah i'll pay myself but yeah Yeah. as long as i have side money coming in you're good to go i'm good to go This this is a passion project for me this is gonna be a long term thing right you're not here for the short grab exactly and a lot of a lot of CEOs and businesses like to put money in because you got a g- risk versus reward, right? Well, yeah. Right. Yep. Any any major risk that you would say? What was the biggest risk you think you took in terms of starting and everything? Was starting the biggest risk, or was hiring people the biggest risk? Um, I would say the biggest risk was dedicating my full time to it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Leaving Mercedes and dedicating my full time to it because. There's a lot of things, you know, when you don't pay yourself, right? Mm-hmm. If you try and go to the bank and get a mortgage, mm-hmm. you know, you when I go to the bank and yeah, I'm like, hey, income, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to buy a house, they'll be like, okay, what's your income? Wh- where's your T4s? Uh-huh. I don't yeah. have any. Well, I, like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Good luck. So <laughs> kind of like living a normal life, you know, like leaving your full-time job to go to, to work on a startup like that, mm-hmm. you're kind of risking not living a normal life but that's obviously something that that's where you find the hacks man exactly exactly (laughs) yeah (laughs) you find the shortcuts of getting a mortgage (laughs) exactly exactly (laughs) know the right people and stuff like that have have you had people trying to replicate what you do in the city or even other places in the city um not that i know okay um i've had I've, i've had people come up to me and say you know i've thought of similar ideas sure and like how can i start Mm -hmm. um but in the city no i'm sure like i know there's other places like there's a a, an app in down in california that's very similar Mm -hmm. um but again our long-term goal is going to completely set us apart from from these people Mm -hmm. completely so what were the struggles like 
that you would say that you face like your top five struggles or something like that from top five. Top <laughs> 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 you know, he has a, just has top a list. list. <laughs> top fifty. No, yeah. like f- starting up, man. Like you're twenty years old. You're starting this. That's tough. Yeah, it's tough. That's young. It's tough. Yeah. Like even like the first round of investments for your company or something like that. What was the true struggle where you're like, okay, maybe this isn't a good idea? Yeah. The ooh, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'd say the toughest part would definitely be like the, the funding for sure, mm-hmm. um, and structuring it because it's not it's not like as easy as okay I take money from you, and that's it we put it into the company like there's so much. It's like I guess before when I was looking at things I was looking at things at a very surface level because that's yeah. all I knew. Yeah. But there's so much more to everything. There's so much more like mm-hmm. even you know to uh, expanding to like. BC or Saskatchewan, I have to look at insurance. Like, mm-hmm. I can't just be like, okay, let's your cars here. You know, like, there's so many legal issues that come with it. Yeah. Um, but I'd say, like, the top one would definitely be financing because it's, like, all bootstrapped. I was bootstrapping it um, mm-hmm. and you know, figuring out. It's, it's a balance, I guess, because if I go to ask for money when the company has 500 users and, you know, we're generating no revenue... Yeah. I'm not going to get much yeah. or it's I'm going to have to give up a lot of the company. Um, so balancing it so that, you know, OK, I got to make m- the money myself somehow mm-hmm. put it into the company, grow to a stage where people would be interested in investing it. That's I'd say was like the number one mm-hmm. tough part for sure. And and you're the major shareholder, I assume. Yes. Right. Yeah. And are you willing to give up a lot or. Yeah, yeah. In order for, to for the right price. Yeah, yeah. right. Of, of course. Gonna yeah. be a, can we get a Shark Deal going on here? <laughs> <laughs> shark Tank Deal. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk numbers. <laughs> I mean, I'm just kidding. How much you want? <laughs> How much you want? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the the round that I'm I'm raising for right now. Um, I think that you know, if we do half a million dollars, mm-hmm. um, you know, we would be able to definitely take the the business to the next level. Okay. Do like a Canada wide expansion and solidify our market share and things like that so that's fair yeah. that's fair for that for the young entrepreneur out there that's wanting to start up in anything what are some tips that you could give to them honestly it's it's kind of cliche but just do it okay. like just just do it um <laughs> don't hesitate because like if you hesitate you're never gonna do it like it's like procrastination right mm-hmm. you just you just have to do it to get over it um and i wouldn't spend too much time on like trying to educate yourself on it before you do it. Like, obviously, it's it's a good idea to validate what you're trying to do, mm-hmm. uh, and do like a small scale test. But if you have an idea, just do it. Don't worry about if you don't know how to do anything. You'll figure it out al- along the way. That's sure. that's my yeah. On that note, I think this is the perfect way to end off the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Check out Michael. We'll link everything in the description below. Maybe even put up a listing. You never know. Right? Make ad. some money. Get put the up ad. a listing. <laughs> Get the ad. And uh, check us out on all social media platforms, even streaming platforms for Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You know what to do. We're live every Tuesday morning at 11.30 a.m. on the UMFM radio station 101.5 FM. Until next time. Peace. Peace out. Thanks, Michael. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thanks for having me.